hello, hello, hello. We're here again. I don't know. I don't know why I'm doing this. Because coffee and drink. I don't know what's going on. <clears throat> I don't know. Is it worth me doing these? I have no idea. But yeah, back to work tomorrow. Because it's a bank holiday here. Yeah? It's one of those weird days where it's a bank holiday make up for January the 1st, which fell on a Saturday. There's been a lot of bank holidays. There's been a lot of time where you don't know what day it is. I don't know what day it is. Is it a Tuesday? Is it a Friday? It all blurs into one. But we're here. And uh, uh, another another year extends before us. And um, <clears throat> I don't know what, yeah, is it worth me doing, is it, oh, yeah, is it worth me doing coffee times? I don't know. Nobody, nobody watches. What's in the news? First thing, I suppose it's face masks in schools, secondary schools in the oops in the UK. They're saying it's not. I don't know if it's. It's not really a law. It's probably an advisory. And in some places, up in Scotland and in Wales, I think they've been doing it anyway. But in our locale, not been doing face masks in in secondary schools where my kids go. But um, when put this to them, it was like, oh, no, I don't want to do that. And Herb was definitely a no-no. If you don't know, Herb's got ASD and uh, he's on the spectrum. And he was like, but Dad, I will suffocate. So I had to explain to him that, no, you won't. So we have our own issues <laughs> about masks and schools. Um, personally, I think it's a waste of time. I don't think what masks are a waste of time. I think in schools are a waste of time. Don't worry. Listen, there's there's logic to this. If you're travelling on the tube and you know, in closed spaces with other people that you don't normally mix with, then you know, fair do wear a mask. It's sensible in closed spaces, outdoors. Not so much, but you know, the kids whilst they're being indoors and studying. There's going to be times when they're going to be in close contact and there ain't going to be any masks like in the playground. Well, no, it's an outdoor environment, but they're going to be probably closer to each other than they would be in the classroom. Toilets, especially girls, teenage girls, they're going to be taking their masks off when they go in the toilets to do their makeup and whatnot. And so that's a contamination point, <laughs> you know. And yeah, I don't know, it's just that kind of that kind of fuzzy thinking that we see every so often. If you're going to have masks, you're going to have to have masks everywhere, outdoors, indoors, you know, hazmat suits. But also, I mean, our kids are, uh, are vaccinated anyway. So it's the, you get that feeling of what next? How many more? You know, because they're talking about having a top-up vaccination on, I think it's from January the 10th onwards, they're going to be doing it. And uh, yeah, the kids can have top-up vaccinations, you know, second one. So it's like, how many more things are we going to do, you know? And then Omicron is a lot milder, apparently. It's a lot, a lot milder than full fat COVID. <laughs> it's uh, COVID light, diet COVID. But some experts are saying if you do get Omicron, it gives you immunity to Delta. So it's its own vaccination. So maybe there should be Omicron parties, you know, like they do with measles and that. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be some parents in America doing that. But yeah, it's a bit of a... I'm hoping that the school don't implement it around here because, you know, like I say, things because it kids, you're not kids like, and then there's going to be the kids that arse about and don't necessarily have their masks on. And yeah, it becomes its whole set of problems. And then, you know, there's a psychological aspect to it. You know, a lot of kids, you know, I think we're, you know, at that time in their mental development, you know, need facial, you know, the whole facial cues for communication. It's bad enough with them doing the old texting and things. But I think it's important for everyone, facial cues. That's without the kids without, um, you know, who have hearing, hearing issues, you know, deaf kids, they're taking away lip reading from them. And that's without all the kids who have um, behavioural issues and, and whatnot, or, or on the spectrum. 
You know, it's a whole big thorny issue. And like I said, I'm in one of those vulnerable groups, if you don't know, type 2 diabetic diagnosed last year. And there is a link between COVID and diabetes, type 2 diabetes, apparently, on the Diabetes UK website. There's been an, an uptake in in diabetes. So maybe I had it, and that's why in 2019, when I felt really crap, maybe I had long COVID then. I know it goes against the narrative, but, you know, I had something in 2019 that made me very, very ill. Um, and that's it. Meanwhile, everyone's complaining about Tony Blair getting his knighthood. They're going to be discussing it in the Houses of Parliament. Um, again, he's a controversial figure, but it's not unusual for past Prime Ministers to be honoured. And Tony Blair it was always coming. I think it happened because Philip died, Prince Philip, because Philip's gone. The Queen finally got round to honouring Tony Blair. Um, again, I'm not his greatest fan. I think he did some good stuff. I think, you know, again, there was good, some good stuff and there was some bad stuff. You know, the Holy Rock War. And thinking back, I mean, I was, you know, up until a point I was with him, you know, because you, you take the the whole dodgy dossier at face value, go, oh, well, maybe there is some sort of weapon that they've got, you know. But then when that all fell apart, you know, I was very critical. And it was like, well, thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, innocent people died because of this this misinformation. And that we never really got to the bottom of where it came from. And that's my big issue. Tony Blair never turned around and said, hey, I was wrong. We were given dodgy information and they never had an inquiry to see where the information was from. And then there's, you know, the old doctor who they found in the woods, you know. And this is why people get you know, into conspiracy theories and things like that. It's all down to Tony Blair and that and, uh, and George W. Because they both believed in this um, misinformation and it was never really examined. And I think, again, from that point onwards, I think people became a lot more distrusting of government structures and a lot of these conspiracy theories sprung up and they meant mentally vulnerable, you know, latched on to things like that. So, yeah. But he was always going to get his, his honour. Um, yeah. What do I care? I don't care. I'm not going to call him... Sir Tony, I'm just going to call him Tony. Same with everybody who gets a knighthood. They're still Mr. Blair or Mr. Whoever to me. It doesn't change who they are. Um, so what else is um, what else is happening? I'm just looking at the news. It's Omicron going on about Omicron. Um, more test kits are out shortage. Um, Though they are thinking of scrapping pre-departure COVID tests for passengers entering England. There's no point. There's no point in testing now. If you're going to travel around, there's no point. There's no point in any of it. Because it's it's everywhere. You've got to give up. This is natural immunity now. Fire, herd, herd immunity. We got there. <laughs> Boris's plan, we've already got there. But it's always going to happen. Because you cannot control viruses like this. Very, very difficult. Unless you have a complete and utter lockdown. Again, the initial strategy I, I would have adopted at the very beginning was a worldwide lockdown for about six weeks and then open up and then treat the hot spots individually, you know, where these things fare up. But then you immediately open yourself up to a, a, re, a flare up of, of, of the of the virus. So there's no there's no right, wrong way of dealing with it. It's, it's out there. It's a virus. It'll do what it wants. You know, we can't control it. Because you know viruses have been around a lot longer than we have, um, so yeah. Oh, this is a, this is one. Wine prices are set to soar under fairer alcohol tax. Um, yeah, apparently there's a new, new tax changes added. This is um, uh, something that Rishi 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 Sunak should have put the right teeth in. He's going to be doing duty based on alcohol on alcohol strength. So stronger the booze. The more duty you're going to play on it. Um, doesn't affect me. <laughs> Don't drink now, thanks to. Well, I had some champagne at Christmas because I'm allowed that. I'm not. I shouldn't really because of the sugar content, but um, it doesn't affect me. Um, I don't think it's going to stop people. People, if you're an alcoholic, you're still going to drink. You know, you just, you know, maybe change your tipple. Again, we got to that issue of you know. I mean, in a way, you know, you do need to pay for the um, 
medical services and the issues that are brought up with alcohol because again but i think i think it's time we legalized all all drugs you know recreate make everything recreational and, and taxed earn even more money and then everyone can choose their tipple and uh, you know get taxed fairly so yeah so if you're a boozer sorry to hear that i suppose you're going to take up smoking again oh i shouldn't do that either shouldn't do that either oh oh can't can't have cake no cake for me oh dear cake is my alcohol <laughs> oh dear oh dear meanwhile match.com like they're a uh, they do dating have you, are, you, are you lonely have you got have you swiped right at least recently I, i'm i'm married so uh, that's not i think they're for me <laughs> Oh dear! Look, look. Who's gonna? No one had, no one had swipe right on this. Look at this. It's fucking awful, isn't it? You know, if it was a building, it would have been condemned a long time ago. Um, but anyway, yeah, uh, uh, Match Group and Tinder, because I didn't know that Tinder was part of Match Group. Um, are, are taking on an Islamic app called Muzmatch. Of course. Are you are you looking for a like-minded Muslim? Do you want to? Go to the, you know, <laughs> go to the mosque together. Yeah, but then you've got to separate, haven't you? You know, guys one way, girls the other. Uh, <laughs> um, Muzmatch is apparently been copying their products and services. Um, so yeah, there's a, it's a trademark, also a trademark uh, infringement. So that should be interesting. Tinder taking on the Muslims. Will there be a fatwa? Will there be a fatwa? Nobody knows. Nobody nobody knows. Who remembers fatwas, eh? Who remembers that? Um, but yeah, the big big story for, for people in the UK is the price of energy going up. And um, old Boris, old fluffy-haired Boris, our, our beloved leader, has been urged to look into tackling the incoming storm of energy prices um yeah that's a tricky one that and again this is it's a bit of an odd it's a bit of an odd one because you'd think with all the solar and wind power that's being generated that the price of energy would slowly equalize and come down but we, we do rely on a lot of um, gas power and a lot of that now is being provided by our mate vlad you know in in russia old putin himself has got one giant pipeline a you know Putin, you can tell why he's confident because he's got a massive pipeline. He's look at his massive pipeline. Oh no, it's a terrible analogy, isn't it? Really, uh, but yeah, his massive pipeline serves Europe. <laughs> oh dear, laughing at my own jokes. This is terrible. This is this is bad, isn't it? Isn't it terrible? So yeah, Vlad's massive pipeline, with which he services most of Europe, Germany in particular. Um, is the cause of this because he's he's been able to set the the uh, unit price of gas, <laughs> and um, yeah, and that's why mainly the prices. Oh, or you could just blame it on Brexit. Let's just blame everything on Brexit. Eh? It's a lot easier. Um, oh, why am I so old and ugly? Brexit. Thanks. That's, that'll do. Um, so yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Um, a lot of energy companies in the UK. And that was it. That was very interesting. This is interesting. Trust me on this. A lot of energy companies failed. And the funny thing is, is a lot of these energy companies were run by people that had zero expen uh, experience of energy. Uh, some of them were set up as like what they call turnkey companies. They were set up by a, th a third party and then sold on to people that wanted to operate them. And they were operating. It was like almost like, um, uh, what would you call it? a form of uh, financial liquidity because they'd have other bit of businesses and they'd have one of these energy companies I'm talking about the smaller ones which had like maybe 80,000 customers and whatnot but they were they were turnkey companies bought off the shelf and then run but because the customers have to pay for their energy in advance because you have to like put it like it's almost you have to pay like 80 quid a month or whatever you or 150 or whatever it is you know individually that money's kind of sloshing around in a big account. And so these, these companies often use that money for other things. And that's why they went bust, because they couldn't cover their their overheads at the end, even though that money was designated for 
the costs of the energy. As soon as the the, um, the tariff price went up, collapse. Fascinating. There's there's quite a few articles out there. Do go and read up on it. But um, you know that's why a lot of the smaller companies just 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 you know fell in on themselves because they weren't they weren't designed for a rise in any um, unit cost. And I honestly wonder why these people were were involved in them in the first place. It's again, this is goes back to dear old old Maggie T. You'll have you'll have you you we're going to we're going to privatise and the the energy industry. So you'll have choice. You'll have choice. Yeah, yeah. Look where it's got us. Look where it's got us. You know, it's just been used by people exploiting the system. And as soon as these things are <coughs> are renationalised, the better. And then we can have subsidised energy. And people have cheaper energy bills. So the same as we had subsidised. Well, in Crikey, we have subsidised rail by stealth because we have to prop up the the privatised rail industry because that didn't work. Um, so yeah, fascinating stuff, isn't it? Anyway, I've gone on far too long. I doubt if there's anybody in the chat room, but we'll we'll have a looky looky. Let's see if there's anybody there. Crazy's in. This is good start to 2022. Not particularly. No, but. Yeah. Run Scoop likes to see coffee time. I'm usually at work when these are on. Uh, fingers crossed it won't be crap. Yeah, it's not been a good start for me, I must admit. Classic says, Happy New Year. Hope you're well. Nope. And Toothade main, meant you got the choppers sorted. Uh, uh, no, I didn't really raise that much. Because, <laughs> yeah, people, it's, times, are, times are hard for people. I don't expect people to subsidise my crazy uh, dental experiments. Um, I've I don't know much. I haven't looked at the credit. I don't want to look at the credit card. Do you know when I got? Do you know when I got my email for my credit card bill? Two minutes to midnight, New Year's Eve. Popped in. He went, "Here you go, Mister Lock. Here's your credit card bill for you. Happy 2022." I thought, Barclay card, you bunch of sadists. Um, I haven't looked at it. I don't know, probably about the last knockings. I was probably about 800 quid left. So I'm, this month it'll be about half of that knocked off, so I'll probably be down to about three hundred quid. But it's like, oh, I'll get there eventually. It's just it's horrible, and I've got to go. I've got to go on the nineteenth. I've got to go back there again. So I wonder. I wonder if any more work needs to be done. Oh, I wonder. <laughs> I've got a funny feeling it's going to be an expensive time again, and it's something I really can't afford. Um, but that's the way it goes. Uh, Brendan says football matches darts. I don't know what that is. How's my groove been? Uh, painful. Uh, Happy New Year. Well, yeah, I've got, I've got to go through the room. Happy New Year to everyone who watches. <laughs> what coffee am I drinking? Awful, disgusting instant coffee because that's all I'm worth, all right? Because I'm just a, a disgusting, horrible individual. Harold says, Happy New Year. Prog on. Yeah. Um, one year closer to death and a sweet relief and release from all of this nonsense, eh? Um, Got to keep it optimistic. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, no, I've got, I realise that I, my diet is just basically water and cream crackers. Not even cream crackers, just air. Because if my blood sugar goes any higher, it's just constant fucking pain for me, and I'm in pain at the moment. Um, and I was I, my my crime, my crime last night, sharing some cheese and biscuits with the missus, you know, cheese and crackers, because it's it was our, one of our traditions, and um, and uh, the neuropathy just makes it flare up. I basically got to keep my blood sugars below six, and that's really difficult. It's really hard to do unless I starve myself, and or unless I, like I said, I eat something that's. I mean, I've not had anything since. All I was a, a small bowl of cornflakes this morning. I've not had anything since breakfast, um, and I have lunch, but you know, all sugary stuff is out. I don't even have a biscuit anymore. <laughs> no more biscuits, just kill me. And um, I guess there must have been high sugar content in the cream crackers. Because it can't be that cheese is okay. I'm all right with cheese. I thought cheese would be fine, but we did have cheese with cranberries in it. So uh, I know dried fruit can be a little bit of a, a no-no. So I don't know, but yeah, hands. 
it's in my hands now, folks. So no more music, maybe. I don't know. I've actually got it in my hands now. So fantastic. Um, I just went to bed last night and my hands were like, they were like on fire. And it was just like brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. It finally got to my hands. That means, who knows, carries on like this. Might be at my heart soon. And then I'll start getting really bad heart problems. Yay. I can't wait. It's so exciting, but you shouldn't have asked. But now people say I'm a narcissist for telling you, but you ask. And I'm going to tell you. So there you go. But don't worry, I'm not asking for sympathy. It's just what's going on. You ask. If I'm not here, if one day you tune in and you go, oh, Darren hasn't posted a, a video for six months, then you know what's happened. Um, you know, uh, and that's the thing. Again, I don't think people really understand with some diabetes is you do get, there's 50% chance you're developing a neuropathy. And like I say, the ones I've got in my feet are, can be particularly painful. I have a good few days where, you know, every I have, I have days where everything's fine, and then suddenly, I, again, I don't see myself as eating problematically. Though I did have some pasta last night. Pasta's a no-no, but I'm cooking for everyone else. And I think oh, I just have a little bit, and I don't really want to cook separate dinners for me and everyone else because you know I feel like a fucking leper. You know, <laughs> it's just I'll just I'll just have this salad then. Yeah. but anyway like I say nobody cares about my problem so I'm out of here thanks for watching hope you've enjoyed coffee time I don't know I like doing them but the problem is is the algorithm or whatever this thing is the thing that means we only get you know four or five hundred views on videos means that these don't do very well because I don't know what YouTube is uh, your content shit Darren nobody's interested yep yeah, that's it <sighs> You know, I, I just don't know what this... I've never known what this platform's been like for... I mean, it, it bugs me, because we, me and the kids do great Doc 2 reviews. They don't get viewed either. Yet there's some old toss out there, some bloke with all these Doc True fucking toys behind him. They listen to him, you should be listening to the kids. It's for the kids, man. It's for the kids. <laughs> Maybe it's because they're kids in it. Oh, I hadn't thought of that, because they, have, they have rules against kids being in videos. Oh, shit. That's my problem. And, and that's my problem. Because I look so youthful... Because I look so youthful, that's probably why the videos don't do so. Because they probably think I'm so young. They probably think I'm only about 12. There you go. Anyway, thanks for watching. No, don't feel, don't feel stupid for wishing me a happy new year. We're all stupid. Everyone's stupid. As soon as you can accept your own stupidity, then the world would be a better place. You know I'm an idiot. <laughs> that's why I do this. Because I'm, because I have no other discernible talent. So I do this. I come on camera and I talk because that's all I can do. Right? You know. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe I'll get a job in the new year. <laughs> you apply, you hear fuck all. Um, I did have one place check me out on New Year's Day. And I made a note who they are because I'm not going to work for them. Because if you're on New Year's Day checking out my application for a job, What's sadder, me applying for jobs on New Year's Day or them checking my application on New Year's Day? Hmm. I don't know what's sadder. I think they're sadder because if you've got a business, you should be having your feet up, enjoying yourself rather than looking at useless strokes like me. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope I haven't brought you down too much. You know. No. Yeah. Don't do this for fun, do we? I don't, uh, who's laughing? No one's laughing. But anyway, have a, have a good time, all the time. That's that's the motto, isn't it? That's all we can go for. And uh, we'll carry on. Again, because it's a weird time. It's a weird time at the moment. Because it's this transitionary period between holiday and... Well, for me, every day is a holiday, isn't it? You know, I've said that when I was 17. I remember saying it to the missus. Every day is a holiday. And it kind of came into... It kind of came real, didn't it? Um, Permanent Vacation. Uh, album by Aerosmith, I believe. Um, yeah, because we're doing this thing, you don't want to put videos out because people are often not watching. So there's not been many videos because I know you know people aren't around. But maybe, to maybe tomorrow I'm going to settle down. Until tomorrow I'll just keep moving on. Do-do-do-do-do. 
maybe I'll do some videos and then put them out tomorrow. Maybe. Uh, nobody cares. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hopefully uh, you're not all uh, strung yourself up. Mind you, can't do that because I, oh no, I probably I probably get blocked for that now, won't I? Oh God, the algorithm. What can you say? What can you do? It's frightening. Anyway, <laughs> hopefully I've raised a little titter. For don't we all love little titters? Do you love little titters? I love little titters. Big titters, little titters, all titters are great. And we're going to zip on out of here because it's almost lunchtime. Oh my. And with that, there's only one more thing left to say, and that is don't forget, drink it up. <laughs>